Hello, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today we're going to make a kit and uh, I'm going to select a suitably appropriate one. Oh, that was something I made that didn't work, so we'll fling that aside for now. Uh, this one has got some jolly jolly LEDs, so let's check them, check it out. Do, do, do. No instructions at all, no advice, no nothing as per usual. Still, if we can get through the packet, I think we're on to a winner. Interesting, interesting. Right, so it's definitely got some LEDs. Audio, audio, it has an audio input right there. So I'm guessing this is a VU meter. So let's see what we've got. A little bit up close here. So this is a KA. 2284 whatever at KA2284 is and there's no markings to say which is pin 1 so I might get that wrong I'll have to have a look on the old phone but everything else looks pretty simple the LEDs are nicely marked and they've actually got the polarity written on them remember long leg positive so we're just going to pop those in this looks rather simple this could be a very quick build so if it's an audio meter, effectively it's a voltmeter. And they've given us, oh, there's, there's a bunch of LEDs, but they've given us a red LED as well for the end. So that's telling you that it's overloaded there. And there's a small pot to adjust things, which I've just bent. Probably ought to be a bit more gentle with that let me let me unbend it and we'll try again and we've got our sockets for audio and we've got our socket for power electrolytic capacitor right there so we're going to put that in again remember long leg positive and then the 10k resistor And 100 ohm. Now, this is where I get stuck again because I again never learned to read the resistor numbers, but that's fine. We'll pop that in there. Well, this took a tumble the other day. Screen's looking a little bit wonk, to say the least. Yeah, repaired. And that's our 100 ohm, pretty much. So we'll just pop the old 100 ohm in there, pull that through. And I'm not going to fit, I'm not going to fit that IC without having a look. So I'll fit everything else, and the IC can go in at the end after I had a chance to look at a data sheet for it, see which way around it might want to go. And the last electrolytic. So all we need to do now is apply our very special piece of foam, flip it over, righty ho! Let's get our soldering iron out and start going for it. That's really all you can do on some of these. And I'm just going to tack weld because it's all through hole. And it's LEDs, which always need a little bit of a jiggle. Resistors. There's something else. Don't know what that is. Could be electrolytic cap. That's going to be our switch. And I think that's one or the other. Electrolytics. And unfortunately, we've lost these guys, but we'll put them in after. I'm just going to put my finger on one side to just push the LEDs home. Ah, probably this way is better. There you go. That's a, a happy little row of LEDs. A 
probably do a little poke through. It's probably sat as well as it's going to sit. And then we're going to bend our adjustment pot to be a bit nicer. Now I've noticed something on our chip here. So this IC, the KA2284, has actually a, a, a notch cut in the top. You might just see it. it's just a little diagonal cut. Pretty sure that means it can go in this way. That's how I'm going to solder that one in. Again, I'm just going to tack a leg in for now. No different to any of the other components. And if I can, I might just try to get these in. So when it says audio as a source, it's quite interesting. If you wonder if it's just a line level, and I think a line level might be a volt and a half. But unfortunately, my favorite audio source, which is my phone, no longer has headphones. Because it's a new phone, and it has a, it has a Bluetooth, of all things, headphone. So I'm pretty much stuffed on that one. So I shall have to source something. I'll, I'll have the last bit of soldering to think about what I'm going to use as a source for the audio. like soldering through a forest here. Might be starting to get to be a good time to cut those legs off. And if you're doing it at home, Feel free to do a bit at a time, chop them off. In fact, let's just do that now. We'll remove some of this foliage. And then see what we've got left. Almost done. I'm pretty much ready to go. This is quite nice how they've done this. They've given us our power and audio. could try attempting to put power on it I suppose to start with no idea on the voltage as for the audio source that's the bit it's going to be more tricky do a little bit of a head scratch on that one okay let's turn on our power supply. Power supply is currently at 5 volts so we'll pop that on. I've got a mini disc player on my lap and it's actually a full size mini disc player. It's currently playing a tune. It does have a volume control on the front so I've got a, a wire coming out of its headphone socket and I've put a headphone, another headphone socket basically and that's wired into this unit and the actual player itself does have a volume control on the headphone which is kind of cool so I can set it up and down and it's doing the same sort of thing this does so this will attenuate the signal uh, to let you use the full range and if I whack it up to full you can see it's just on the red and I put it to kind of halfway it's still on the red and then it starts flickering quite low in, in the range probably the first eighth of a turn so what I might do is I'm leaving the volume now on the main unit the mini disc player at halfway and then I'm going to adjust this and of course if you've got a screwdriver you can put that in there and probably one of those plastic screwdrivers might be good. We'll see which way we've got to turn this. So that's probably about right for a halfway volume so we're getting a nice little contrast there. And then of course as I turn the headphone socket down, it goes down and then the headphone socket up although interesting enough it's kind of not maxing out there so maybe we want to adjust it so the headphone socket now is on maximum volume 
maybe you want to turn this ever so slightly so that it's in the red yeah I think that's probably all right as soon as I turn it back down to kind of halfway yeah you, you get the idea you get the idea so you can play with it as you want I mean that's quite nice I mean if you think about it that IC is doing everything here and looking at the circuit let's have a close up here basically it's driving the LEDs directly and then you have the audio coming in here via the electrolytic there's an electrolytic there that's like there the audio is coming in and then there's this tuning pot here and it's coming to there which is another electrolytic and then there's an input pin which it's like pin 2 on this device here so you probably mess with it a little bit yeah it's pretty cool so you should easily be able to make your own VU meter so I wonder if they do these with more outputs I mean that's really quite snazzy and that could be really useful just today we were talking about a project with potentiometers and could we have this kind of thing and it was going to use up a lot of digital IO lines but actually if it's a digital IO representation of an analog signal using one of these and some tuning parts we could just do achieve the same thing so that looks quite cool so there you have it and I can't read the chip anymore you have to remember what it is but there is that digital VU kit from eBay as ever thanks for watching